then I could eat anything or any combination of things and still keep my percentage of fat down to no more than 20%. In the meantime, I can take any recipe, run it through the program, and my computer will compute the percentage of fat in the final product. That way I can keep a running tab of my entire day. Every time I put something into my mouth, or better yet, before I put something into my mouth, I can see if it's all right. I know where I stand at any given moment of the day. For example, <laughs> the percentage of fat that I've consumed today, as of this moment, is 18%. Yesterday, it was 14%. Last Monday, I went out to eat with friends. Said, well, we're not even going to talk about it. However, my month to date shows that overall I'm running at a respectable 32%. Like I said, I'd like to get that down to 20%. Eventually, I will be able to compare months, years, decades. This will give me a picture, an indication of my eating patterns and when my PFPs are. My peak fat periods. <laughs> With the help of this baby, a new church any, I'm going to kiss this extra 15 pounds goodbye forever. church. No. I don't go anymore except on Christmas Eve with my parents. But you know what they say, you can never be an ex-Catholic, just a fallen away one. Despite that, I'm fairly normal. <laughs> Though I do have the usual well-developed sense of guilt and fear of retribution. It wasn't always like that, though. For the first eight years of my life, we lived across the street from my grandmother's general store and gas station in Jackman, Maine, way up there 15 miles from the Canadian border. Legend has it that I could drink soda out of a straw before I could drink milk out of a cup. Inside my grandmother's store, oh, it was like a dream come true for a kid. There was this cooler just filled with soda. Orange, grapes, strawberry, root beer, cream, Coca-Cola and those green bottles. My sister and I would drink them out of straws, you know, the kind that collapse after a while. There was this machine that you put a penny in, turn the crank, hold a paper bag underneath, and it's filled with peanuts. We're not talking dry roasted peanuts here. The machine was coated with salt around the mouth where the peanuts came out. And your bag would develop these little grease spots within seconds. <laughs> uh, there were racks and racks of potato chips. King Cole barbecue was my favorite. Most magnificent of all were the two glass cases filled with penny candy. Real penny candy. Mary Jane squirrels root beer barrels, mint juleps, Tootsie Rolls, Tootsie Pops, coconut watermelon and bacon strips, malted milk balls, sweet tarts, chocolate babies, red and black licorice whips, hot balls, oh God! <laughs> Save up our stash all week and then 
brings me right back to those old Catholic days. When I'm sticking with a diet, I'm good. I'm more than good. I'm a saint. <laughs> if not, I am so, so bad. Like, it's a mortal sin to eat a big piece of chocolate cake with chocolate frosting and really enjoy it. So, I guess you can never be an ex-dieter, just a fallen away one, right? <laughs> I was white all over, I was white inside, dressed for communion like the Lord's own bride, from my little white veil to my patent leather toe, I was totally Catholic and ready to go. Rose with beads, I started shooting there, held a bead in each hand, tried to say one prayer, I got the saint's name, confirmation day, then I saw my cheek and I was all my Yeah. <laughs> 
and losing the same 15 pounds over and over again, I have finally found a way of eating that works for me. It is called the Fat Free Party Pig Diet Plan. <laughs> That means that I eat low fat until I have a better offer. <laughs> Besides, His Majesty seems to like the way I look, n'est-ce pas? He told Monsieur Boucher, Francois, paint Mademoiselle Murphy and other splendid foodness. But alors, if the chef wants to offer me cake, it is only fitting I oblige, no? Oh, merde. I have to run out of the toilet encore. François! Excusez-moi, François! I am moving! I am moving! wait to 
could get old enough to wear makeup. I used to watch my mom every morning at the breakfast table doing her beauty routine. She had this plastic carry case filled with cosmetics. See, my mom was a teacher and so she was on a schedule. There was only so much time in the morning. So while she and my dad chatted and ate breakfast, she did her hair and makeup. God, I was fascinated by the ritual. The foundation, the eyelash curler, the blusher, the lipstick, and the teasing of the hair. <laughs> the funny thing is, even though I watched her tease it, I never put that action together with why she had big hair. <laughs> See, it was the 60s. Everyone had big hair except me and other little girls. So I concluded that once you got to a certain age, <laughs> your hair no longer laid flat. It just grew big. That's how you knew you were grown up. I used to spend hours in front of the mirror just staring at my hair, waiting for it to grow big. <laughs> when my sister and I were old enough, we had our makeup kits and makeup mirrors at the breakfast table too. Every morning was like this Mary Kay party. <laughs> the setups got more and more elaborate. Uh, electric blow dryers, electric curling irons, electric rollers, electric makeup mirrors, the kind with the lights that have three settings, daytime, office, and nighttime. <laughs> Everything was electric. My dad just sat there chatting and eating his cornflakes. I guess my mom got the hair and makeup ritual from her mom. They both worked outside the house, so they had this public appearance to keep up. My grandmother always wore her hair and makeup just so, and tastefully. Turquoise eyeshadow, charcoal <laughs> mascara, rose rouge, and lipstick. It was important to her. I remember years later, my grandmother was visiting for the holidays, and something was wrong with her leg. She was really sick, and she looked terrible. Finally, my mom decided that the only thing left to do was to call the rescue unit. When my grandmother found out that they were coming, she did her entire hair and makeup with a hand mirror because she couldn't stand, put on her fur coat, and when they took her away on that stretcher, she looked better than any of us. <laughs> makeup is serious business. <laughs> After high school, I went to work for Estee Lauder Cosmetics as a beauty consultant for a year and a half before I started college. And for six months after, I worked as a makeup artist for special makeover clinics. During this time, I wore an absolute ton of makeup. <laughs> the theory was the more makeup we had on, the more we could sell. <laughs> for example, if someone came up to me and said, I love that color lipstick, what is it? I could reply, it's nice, isn't it? I'm working with a layering principle here. <laughs> I started with a lipstick foundation. This helps your lipstick to stay on better. Then I outlined my lips using a wineberry lip liner. This helps to contain the color within the lip line and adds definition. Then I followed with one of our new shades from the Spring Fling Victorian Garden Collection. <sighs> Brandied orchid. Doesn't that sound beautiful? <laughs> and I finished by applying a little lip gloss. I used Cherry's Jubilee and applied it with a lip brush to the center of the bottom lip only. This gives that sexy pouty look. <laughs> Simple and very expensive. I learned the makeup trade from this woman, Marge, who taught me gems to say, like, as in orders prepares this canvas, so must you prepare your face. <laughs> or, if you wash your face with soap, it leaves a film not unlike the soap scum left on your shower store. <laughs>
you think? Not bad, eh? I'm waiting for the photographer. How are you getting along, Mr. Mulberry? Nearly ready? No, not yet. Portraits. You need them to become well known if you're an actress like myself. And it's no longer just a pretty face they want to see. Now it's a whole figure, head to toe, the perfect hourglass shape. Timeless. That's what really attracts men into the theatre. Isn't that right, Max? Now, of course, I didn't always look like this. I was having difficulty getting work. My manager told me, my dear, do whatever you have to do. And I resisted at first. But box office sales being so important, I began to think seriously about making a change. And then my friend Dorothy told me about a doctor who could remove a couple of my ribs. <laughs> As I say, I didn't want to do it. But the competition nowadays is fierce. Alas, in a moment of weakness, I have the operation. It's done and I'm working. I can't afford to have any regrets. Of course, I still have to wear my corsets. Some doctors have been making a fuss about those, saying that they displace your internal organs or some such nonsense. So what? If you want to work, you have to look your best. <laughs> corsets, bustles with different takes. Are you nearly ready, Mr. Mulberry? <laughs> of course, no one cares whether or not I can move in this contraption. <laughs> Are you really ready? <laughs> Deep breath, hold, and smile. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Be a good boy, Max, and don't move. All right, here goes. Like this. Make it quick. I always know how to stand in front of a mirror so that I look my thinnest. I use the same principle when I'm getting my picture taken. I think that's why I'm always a little startled when I happen to catch a glimpse of myself in a store window. Or God forbid I have to look at myself in those terrifying three-sided mirrors in a store. And candid photographs, just, just forget about it. Those go straight in the trash. I only lost one pound this week, and I didn't cheat at all. All right. I did have an extra grab-and-go snacker <laughs> set on the box for those moments of temptation. Besides, they come in a wide variety of fashion colors. Grab-and-go, it's not just a snack, it's a fashion accessory. I think I must be on some sort of plateau with my weight loss or something. If I could just lose this stomach, I would be so happy. I don't really remember being self-conscious about my body until I started to grow breasts. I think that means that like a lot of women, the onset of adolescence brought about a big change in the way I felt about myself. <coughs> One day in sixth grade, I looked down and to my astonishment, I had enormous breasts. <laughs> gigantic, throbbing melons protruding from my body. <laughs> All right, they weren't that big in the mirror, but looking down, they were amazing. Eventually, I became concerned. I sat my mother down and I told her, my breasts are gigantic and we have to do something about it. Go get a bra or something. And off we went to the mall to get my first training bra. It had a little white bow with a pale pink rose right here. By the time I reached junior high, I was out of training bras and into the real thing. My breasts seemed to have developed faster than a lot of girls my age. The boys started teasing me, calling me jugs, and snapping my bra straps. They probably did this to a lot of girls, but I was sure I was the only one. I began to reassess this growing up business, and I started to cover myself up. By the time I left junior high, I had perfected my look. Photographs from that period show a young girl lost in layers of baggy clothing, her face hidden by her hair. Good 
Good morning and welcome to Beyond Fit. My name is Bethany Perkinstein and I will be guiding you through this high impact, super aerobic, 90 minute non-stop workout. Here at Beyond Fit, we know that you want to be really thin and really firm, but we also know you better than you know yourself. Isn't that right, Susan? Is that a Snickers bar wrapper I smell in your bag? We've had trouble with some of you in the past. So to help you make it through the workout, we posted armed guards at all the exits. <laughs> Don't be alarmed. This is just one of the little ways we help you be as thin as you can be. At Beyond Fit, we don't believe in a long, drawn-out warm-up and cool-down. You're paying good money for this, and we want to give you your money's worth. So for your convenience, we keep our studio heated to 98.7 degrees for <laughs> When we're done, the guards will let you into our air-conditioned cool-down room next door, where the temperature is always set on frigid. You're in good hands here, okay? So let's go! Beyond fit! There's no escaping now, only 90 minutes to go! Repetitions of 666! And check it! Today's 
this kind of is. The duck build platypus, small engine repair, <laughs> quantum physics, <laughs> extinct parasites, <laughs> or beauty secrets. Ooh, that's a hard choice, Skip. <laughs> but I think I'll go with beauty secrets. All right, Susan, beauty secrets it is. As always on Where's Our Mind, if you win today's game, you'll receive the fabulous prize package selected especially for you. Are you ready to play? Yes, I am. Good. <laughs> Question one. Uh, here's a good one. Plump women desire sex less than thin women. <laughs> False. That's right. That's right. Statistically, plump women desire sex more. Uh, in fact, uh, on scales of erotic excitability and readiness, they outscore thin women by a factor of almost two to one. <laughs> kind of reassuring, isn't it, Susan? <laughs> Two, the average woman in the United States is five foot four and weighs what, give or take five pounds? I'd say she weighs 125 pounds. No, Susan, I didn't ask what she says she weighs on her driver's license. <laughs> the average woman in the United States weighs 142 pounds. Now, true or false, at any given time, one in two women are on a diet. True? That's right. <laughs> Fill in the blank. Five years after a diet, most people have gained back what percent of their original weight? Guessing 50%? I'm sorry, Susan. Five years after a diet, most people have gained back 95 to 98 percent of their original weight. Gee, that's pretty depressing, Skip. It sure is, Susan. <laughs> In a recent survey, it was determined that what makes women happiest today is success in a relationship, success in her career, or losing weight. <laughs> That's easy, Skip. Success in a relationship! Oh, wrong again, Susan. Losing weight made women happiest. Well, for the final question in this round, in a recent survey in California, what percentage of nine-year-old girls were on a diet? 2%, 25%, 35%, or 50%? Nine-year-old no girls? Help me from the audience, please. <laughs> Nine-year-old girls on a diet? In California. In California. Could it be 25%? Are you saying you think a quarter of California's nine-year-old girls were on a diet? Susan, that's a really good guess! Fifty percent, Susan, and eighty percent of California's eleven-year-old girls were on diets too. Kind of incredible, huh? Well, at the end of round one, Susan has answered two questions out of six correctly. Let's all give her a big hand. Huh? Come on. Don't despair, Susan. You'll still have a chance of winning today's game if you answer our final bonus question correctly. But first, let's have a word from our sponsor. Could I get you to give me a hand, please? Dieting and exercise are things of the past with the revolutionary new fat fat home lipo suction kit from Long Co. Remove pounds of unsightly fat in only seconds in the privacy of your own home. Adapts to any vacuum cleaner, it's easy to use. Just find the fat and suck those bulges away. In just seconds, you can sculpt the whole new you. Just think, no more time wasted waiting in crowded doctor's offices. No more costly doctor bills. Works like magic. This is an antiseptic, not included. Introductory offer for a limited time only. The fat pack is available to you for only $9.99. That's right, only $9.99. Call today. Get your pencils out. 1 800 suck that. That's 1 800 S U C K F A T. Order now and we'll include a candle making kit. Absolutely free. Recycle out of the fat and make beautiful candles. Ten wicks, five colored eyes, and three designer candle molds to 
today's game and the fabulous prize package selected especially for her. Are you ready to play? As ready as I'll ever be, Skip. Good. To win today's game, complete this sentence. In yet another recent survey, it was determined that more women fear getting fat than what? <laughs> Susan, you could still win today's game if you just answer the question correctly. I'll repeat it for you. More women fear getting fat than what? I don't know. Dying. That's right! More women do fear getting fat than dying! Congratulations, Susan! You won today's game! What do you have to say for yourself? Where's our minds? <laughs> Bob Billingsworth, won't you please tell us what fabulous prizes we have in store for Susan Lizzie? Susan, your dreams have come true. You have won 10 cases of King Cole barbecue potato chips, a lifetime supply of Coca-Cola Classic, and 2,000 pounds, that's one ton of assorted penny candy. All for you, Susan, from Where's Our Minds? Thank you, Bob! And thank you, everybody, for joining us this evening on Where's Our Minds? One day last summer, I was walking down the beach, enjoying the day, doing what I usually do, you know, checking out other women, seeing how their bodies compare to mine. <laughs> I have this imaginary chart in my head, bus way, skip size, weight, bathing suit, hair. <laughs> I give each item a rating and quickly come out with an overall score. Thinner, fatter, better figure, cuter suit, bad hair. Do any of you women do this? <laughs> I don't know when I started doing it. I probably do it all the time. I'm just more aware of it at the beach, of course. Now it's just habit. More and more, when I spy some woman and I whip out my chart, my first thought is, well, you know, she's really young. But to be honest, I don't think I ever had a knockout body. It's not that I dislike my body so much. It's all right, I guess. Well, all of a sudden, this one young woman with an incredible body came walking towards me. Thinner, better figure, fabulous suit, great hair. Wow, stunning. There, Susan is a babe. God, it's been a long time since I felt like a babe. Yeah, sure. I never felt like a babe. <laughs> Maybe I was a babe in a previous life. <laughs> Maybe I was a babe in a previous life and really abused my babe bod, and this is my punishment. <laughs> God, what does it feel like to be a babe anyway? 
I've been on this diet too long. I dreamt last night that I was on this Caribbean island with Mal, Mal Gibson. <laughs> <laughs> We're sitting on this deck overlooking the ocean. The sun's setting, turning the sky, these brilliant shades of pink and orange. I can hear the wind rustling the palm trees, the sound of the waves crashing on the shore. Mel is sitting across from me, eating a big key piece of chocolate cake with chocolate frosting, <laughs> smiling, staring at me with those incredible blue eyes. And I can't take my eyes off the cake. <laughs>
what she's looked like for over 30,000 hours, what she looks like now, sitting next to you. Sorry, Lamb. Venus don't do aerobics. <laughs> It's certainly not any 